You call yourself a believer. Question is, how are you walking? Are you walking the walk that you talk? Or are you walking the way that you used to walk? You say, hey, what difference does it make? Listen, it's the difference between light and darkness. It's the difference between life and death. It is a matter, beloved, of walking in truth and walking in love, a matter of the mind and a matter of the heart. We'll talk about it today. beloved, that as a child of God, it is so important that you walk the walk that you talk. As you look at the last segment of Ephesians, which is chapters 4, 5, and 6, which they call the practical part of the book, the living out of the truth of chapters 1, 2, and 3, and who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ, he starts using this word walk. And he talks about this is the way you're to walk. This is the way you're to walk. And he makes it very clear that your walk is, is to be a matter of keeping your mind straight, of walking according to truth, of walking according to love, keeping your heart right, of walking in the light because you're formerly darkness, but now you're not in darkness anymore. You're in the light. So you're to walk as children of the light. Let's take a few minutes and let's look at it. Now, what I did is every time I came to the word walk in Ephesians chapter 4 and 5 and 6, I just drew two little feet. And I came down with those two little feet as a reminder of this is what God says for the way that I am to walk through life. So let's do this. Now, what we're doing is we're teaching you, of course, how to study the Bible. But every now and then I have to say it again because you know what? God keeps answering my prayer. And my prayer is that God would create such a hunger in people's hearts to know his word, to know him, that there would be a thirst for the spiritual, a thirst for, for not any spiritual, not a woo-woo kind of spirit, but a thirst for the spirit of God, a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. So he brings new people along. So thank you for being patient as I tell them, hey, we've got a free study guide. You can download our study guide for the book of Ephesians by going to preceptsforlife.com preceptsforlife.com. And if you can't download it and you don't have anybody to help you download it, or you can't go to a public library and download it, then pick up the phone and call 1-800-763-1990. That's 1-800-763-1990 and say, hey, I want to study the Bible. I want to know what this woman is talking about when she talks about marking the scriptures, because a lot of people think, oh, this is too holy a book. It is a holy book. It is called the holy Bible. It is truth that sanctifies you, that makes you holy. But God wants you to study it. God wants you to know it. God wants you to understand it. So it does not hurt for you to color code different words or to put symbols on different words so that when you look down, you can see where he talks about walking. Now, Ephesians 4 begins the walking and it says, I therefore, verse 1, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you, with which you have been called. You're to walk uh, in, in the same way that Jesus would have you to walk, to walk in a manner worthy. If you can just imagine old-fashioned scales, and here is Christ-likeness. Your weight is to mar match his weight. You're to walk the same way that he walks. Well, then you come down to verse 17, 
And this is what he says. And this is where we're starting our study today. So this I say and affirm together with the Lord. In other words, he's saying, I want you to know something. I am about to say this, and I want you to know that the Lord is backing me all the way. This is not a figment of my imagination. He says, and I affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk. So I marked walk twice in this verse. I also marked just as, and if you've got the study guide, you know that we told you to mark just as, because it's important. It's a term of comparison. And so he's saying, I don't want you to walk any longer just as the Gentiles walk. Well, how do they walk? He says, they also walk in the futility of their mind. Now, as we look at this passage, I want you to know that true words are very, very important. It's the word truth and it's the word love, okay? Truth and love. Now, when you think of truth, you need to think of the mind because that's where we evaluate things. That's where we discern things. We look at something, we, we find out about it, and then we think it through and say, okay, does it measure up to God's word? So in this passage, you're going to find out that the mind and the way that you think is very important. God wants you to think truth. And the reason he wants you to think truth is because he prayed that you would be set apart through truth. In John chapter 17, and it's a chapter that we've looked at before in our study of this final segment of, of Ephesians. But in John 17, in verse 15, Jesus is praying to God for you. And he says, I do not ask you, God, my Father, to take them, you and me, out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. Keep us, protect us, guard us from the evil one. Well, how are you kept or protected or guarded from the devil? Well, you're protected and you're guarded in this way. Watch what he says. He says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. The whole world lies in the power of the evil one. First John chapter five, verse 19. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Your word is truth. So he's saying, okay, this is the way you keep them. This is the way you protect them. You keep them, you protect them through truth. Your word is truth. So it's important to know that what you think is, has a great impact on your life, but also whether you love or not, how is your heart geared? Is your heart geared toward love? If your heart is not geared toward love, love, loving God and loving others, then you really need to check and see if you got a religion or you got a relationship. If you know about Christ or if Christ is in you and you are in Christ, that's what you need to check out. So he's going to talk in Ephesians chapter four about truth, the mind, about love, the heart. Okay, and, and what I want you to see is he, as we go back and as we look at this, he tells us in verse 15, but speaking the truth in love, truthing it in love love, which means that I know I learn truth. I learn what God says. And then what I do is I take that truth. And as I approach you, or as I talk to you, or as I come alongside of you and put my arm around you and say, now I, I know what you're thinking and I know what you're saying, but let's think about that a little bit more. That's truthing it in love. That means I love you enough to try to help you to see the truth of what God's word says. You know, I've had people that have told me, I'm miserable in my marriage. I met this other man or I met this other woman. And we know that our 
our meeting is ordained of God. We know because when we pray together, we feel closer to God. And not only that, but on this trip, you no, know, our wife and, uh, and our husband couldn't come with us, but it was a church trip. But we just saw how God used us. Listen, that person needs to be truth and love. You need to go up to that person and say, I want to tell you something. You're not thinking right. You're not thinking right. And I love you enough to tell you this. I love you enough to let you know, precious one, that you are walking in disobedience to God. And if you are truly a child of God, you are headed for a divine woodshed. God has to chasten you. You say, oh, they'll say, oh, but you don't know. You don't understand. I mean, you just leave me alone. I know this is of God. How do you know it's not of God? You know it's not of God because it doesn't measure up to the plumb line of God's word. So you truth it in love. And the way that you have to deal with that person is you can't deal with that person on emotions. You have to deal with that person according to their mind. You have to bring them to the word of God and you have to take those scriptures and you have to show them you're off target. You are, are, are about to make a very serious mistake. And if you don't see it as serious, and if you don't have any chastening from the Lord as a result of this, then I have to tell you, you may call yourself a Christian, but you ain't walking the walk you talk. And if you're not walking the walk you talk, then you need to examine it and find out if it's just talk about Jesus or if it's Christ in you. So watch what he's going to do now. He's going to talk about the mind. So let's just think now for a minute. Let's look at these passages. In verse 17, he says, I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles walk. Now watch the reference to the mind in the futility, in the emptiness, in the, in the total vacuum or void of their thinking, in the futility of their mind. Now watch how he describes this futility of, this, of their mind, the endlessness, the, the, the purposelessness of it all. The, 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 uh, it just has no meaning. It says, being darkened in their understanding. They're walking in the futility, in the emptiness of this mind where nobody's at home in reality. Uh, nobody's there. They may be an intellectual, but they have a wisdom of the world, but not a wisdom of God. They're darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. So I am able to pick up all these phrases because I underlined them in black. And I underlined them in black because they're in darkness. So underline in black in the futility of their mind, underline in black, being darkened in their understanding. And in verse 18, the ignorance because of the ignorance that is in them. Listen, ignorance is very, very dangerous. You want to know how dangerous? We'll talk about it right after this important announcement. Think, think, think. When you're a Christian, you don't check your brains at the door. When you're a Christian, you gain the mind of Christ because you get the Holy Spirit and you are able to think and you are supposed to think. And this is what Ephesians 4 wants us to see, that now that I belong to Jesus Christ, I am to walk in a manner worthy of my calling, but I am also to walk not in the futility of my mind the way the rest of the world walks. I'm to walk in, in, in thinking properly. And that thinking properly will manifest itself in the way that I treat people. And this is what we're going to see. We are in an incredible passage in Ephesians, an incredible passage, precious one. But it is a very um, 
it's a little hard to take. It's, it's a very cleansing, cleansing part of Ephesians. It's, it's convicting, it's cleansing, and it's renewing if you listen to what God has to say. Well, as we saw before we took that break, he's talking about the way the Gentiles walked. They walked in the futility of their mind, and in verse 18, they were darkened in their understanding. In verse 18, they had ignorance that was in them. And then he comes down in verse 20, and he says, but you didn't learn Christ that way. Once again, when he says you did not learn Christ that way. What is he talking about? He's talking about the mind. Just take both of your fingers and put them on your forehead, uh, on your sides of your head, above your ears. That's your mind. Think, think, think. Think the way God thinks. Don't think the way you thought before you came to know Jesus Christ. He says, you did not learn Christ in this way. Now watch, because I'm just picking up these thinking phrases. If indeed you have heard him and been taught in him, just as truth is in Christ. Truth is in Christ. Then you drop down in verse 23, and we're underlining these, remember, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then in verse 25, he says, therefore, laying aside falsehood. What do I want you to see? I want you to understand and see how absolutely important it is, beloved, that you keep your mind, that you keep your thoughts under control, that you don't walk the way the Gentiles used to walk. Now, let's go back and let's look at these verses. It says, and we're going to start at verse 17, because this is where we're picking up. I mean, we have covered the other verses pretty thoroughly. I mean, we could dig even deeper, but I'm liable to lose you. All right, verse 17. So this I say and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles walk. Now, when you read this in the original Greek, I mean, it is a strong statement. And when he says, I affirm this in the Lord, he is saying, listen up to me. You listen up. You pay attention. Don't you miss this. I'm affirming it in the Lord. Wake up. Wake up. Listen. So he's saying, this, I slapped my face too hard, it stings. He said, okay, he said that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding. Now, catch how he describes them, excluded from the life of God. These are people that are cut off from the life of God. These are people that are dead in their trespasses and sins, as you read about in Ephesians chapter 2. These are people who walk according to the course of this world, according to the lusts of their heart and the desires of their heart and their mind. We better look at that, turn the page, go back to Ephesians chapter 2. And look at it. He says in verse 2, in which you formerly walked. Now that word formerly is very important. We're going to see former manner of life in Ephesians 4, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh. In other words, just whatever my little old flesh desired is what I went after. Indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Indulging the desires of the flesh and the mind. All right, so you go back to Ephesians chapter 4 and you say, oh, I understand exactly what he's saying and I understand it because I read Ephesians chapter 2. And so he says, here are these Gentiles, verse 18 of chapter 4, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God. Why? Duh! Because of the ignorance that is in them. They are ignorant about God. They are ignorant about righteousness. They are ignorant about the holiness of God. 
You've got to realize that when you're out there in the world, when you're out there in that workplace, when you're in the grocery store, when you, when you go to the movies, when, when uh, you know, wherever you go, wherever you go, you've got to remember that in this world, there are three classes of people. There are Jews who do not know Jesus, but many of them are liberal, secular Jews, others that are religious and Orthodox Jews have a fear of God. So there are Jews, there are Gentiles, and a Gentile is anybody that is not God, that uh, uh, is not a Jew. And then the third class of people is Christians. And the Christians come from the Jews and the Gentiles. Christians are made up of Jews and Gentiles who have believed in Jesus Christ, who have received Christ, who have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, and who have been placed in the body of Jesus Christ. So what you have is you have Christians that have the life of God. They pass from death to to life, from the power of Satan to the kingdom of God. They understand truth. They know what life and light is all about, and they know that they go together. But the rest of the world, they're excluded from God. There is an ignorance in them about God. And your job and my job is to live in the world, but not to be part of the world. We're to live in it, but we're not to be part of the world. And so here they are because of the ignorance that is in them. Now, why are they, duh, why are they ignorant when it comes to the things of God? Hang on. It's a matter of the heart again, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, what does that mean? That means that they cannot feel any pain over sin. It says, and having become callous, having given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. What are these people like? What are these Gentiles like? And these Jews like that have no fear of God, that have, that have turned away from God because of the hardness of their heart, that are walking in ignorance to them. Listen, there is no stab of pain. If you take a callus and you stick a pin in it, you don't feel a thing. And that's because it's hardened over. And he's saying that these people, through their greediness of, of wanting to have more and more and satisfy their sensuality, these people have ended up like this. Now, what is God saying? He's saying, think, think, don't walk like the Gentiles walk, beloved. Think, keep your mind under control. Remember, you didn't learn Christ this way. And because you didn't learn him that way, you can't live like that. You're to walk the walk you talk. And the walk that you talk should be Christ's likeness in every aspect, not in the futility of your mind like the Gentiles. In other words, you are to live life on a much higher level plane, the plane of righteousness, of holiness, of godliness, and you do it with a humble pride, showing God that you love him above all else. The psalmist wrote, through thy precepts, I get understanding and I hate every false way. You know, it's very interesting that God said to Jehoshaphat one day, should you help those who hate me? Should you love those who hate me? There are things that you and I are to hate. We're to hate a false way. And the reason that we're to hate a false way is because it leads to destruction. What did you learn today? What is your precept for life that you are to hang on to? Well, I think your precept for life ought to be this, beloved. I profess to know Jesus Christ. I bear the title 
Christian, which means little Christ. Therefore, God, what I am going to do is I am going to keep my mind under control. I am going to get to know you. I am going to grow in the knowledge of you. I am going to spend time daily in your word because your words are truth. And as I look at them and as I read your precepts for life, I'm going to examine my life and I'm going to see if there's anything in my life that is displeasing to you and I'm going to put it aside. I'm not going to live that way. That's not the way I learned Christ. God, I'm going to tell you today that I am going to live according to every word that comes out of your mouth. These are the precepts for life. And if they're the precepts for life, then this is the way life is to be lived. And this is where life is found. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. And that abundant life, beloved, comes from thinking right, from thinking truth. It comes from love, from walking according to the heart that God gave you when he saved you and he removed your heart of stone and he gave you a heart of flesh. It's all about truth and love, the mind and the heart, and then walking in the light even as he is in the light. This is your precept for life. And in 1 John it says, if you say, that you believe in Jesus and you're not walking in the light as he walked in the light, then the truth is not in you. You're walking in darkness. You're deceived. And that's what the world is. Remember, the world is deceived. They're walking in the futility of their mind. They're walking in ignorance. And it's ignorance because of the hardness of their heart. Don't walk like them. Walk like Christ. Thank you for watching today. All the programs you see on Precepts for Life are available on CD and DVD. To order your copy of today's program, log on to our website. To download your free copy of the study guide or to find out more about Precept Ministries International, click on our website or call us today at 1-800-763-1990. Join us for our next program as Kay shares more Precepts for Life.